Hi guys, thanks for tuning in. This will be my last video for this chapter and we're gonna do a quick preview of cylindrical coordinates. All right, so for our first example, we're going to look at the triple integral of y squared over a particular 3D region. Now this 3D region is the space that's trapped between a paraboloid that's opening down and so uh, basically nine minus x squared minus y squared and the xy plane uh, z equals zero so that basically we're integrating over the 3d region between a paraboloid and the plane and in this case it is not going to be a volume calculation because you'll notice that we do have an integrand that's not equal to one all right so the first iteration of this problem asks us to set up but do not compute so we have a directive here that's telling us to set up this triple integral but don't actually run the numbers so in that case we don't really need to change to any sort of new coordinate space we're not going to do a change of variables to start with um, because it's fairly easy to say okay um, you know i know what my z top and my z bottom is my z top is 9 minus x squared minus y squared my z bottom is z equals zero um, I can easily set those equal to each other. So if 9 minus x squared minus y squared is set equal to 0, um, I could turn that into the circle, x squared plus y squared equals equal to 9. And you can kind of see that that makes sense because it looks like on the xy plane, we have a circle sitting on the xy plane, and that's the same circle we see right here. And then we could get our y top and our y bottom by solving for y, so you get y is equal to the square root of 9 minus x squared, and then y is equal to negative square root of 9 minus x squared. And then finally, you can see that x varies from negative 3 to 3. So we can use all of that to easily set up our triple integral. And there it is. Um, so this is a great technique for a setup but do not compute. You can see we've got our z top and our z bottom our y top and our y bottom, and then our x left and our x right. Um, so you would get full credit on this problem if it said set up but do not compute and you gave this as an answer. However, maybe we should figure out how to actually crunch the numbers on this problem using an appropriate change of coordinates, change of variables. Um, unfortunately, this integral as it stands right now would be very difficult to do using the, uh, the integration techniques that we currently know. Um, however, there, we do have a hint here. Look at how the cross sections of this shape are circles, circles parallel specifically to the xy plane. And so the presence of those circular cross sections kind of indicates to us that maybe some variation on polar coordinates is going to be our best bet. All right, guys, and for this final example, we just need to crunch the numbers. So we're gonna take this integral that we set up on the previous slide. We're gonna pick an appropriate change of variables based on polar coordinates like we talked about, and we're gonna do the math. We're gonna crunch the numbers and uh, compute this triple integral. So um, our variation on polar coordinates that we're gonna use, uh, is it's actually called cylindrical coordinates. But if you look at cylindrical coordinates here, this looks just like polar coordinates that you guys are familiar with from previous chapters. Look, x equals r cosine t, y is equal to r sine t. The only thing that's a little bit different here is uh, we are in three-dimensional space, so we need a third coordinate. We're going to say that z of r s t is equal to s, but it's really going to represent the same idea, which is um, a change in depth, right? A, a change in z coordinate. Um, and the reason this is called cylindrical, if I take r cosine t and r sine t, and I draw a circle of radius r, and then I drag that circle through a depth s, what do I get when I drag a circle of radius r through a height s? I get a cylinder. So hence, cylindrical coordinates. Uh, a couple other things to know here. Um, we have a volume conversion factor equal to R. I think you guys are familiar with that from polar coordinates. It's the same Jacobian determinant you know from polar. And then um, we've used this on a few other examples in class, but just remember that when we're switching between polar and uh, rectangular coordinates, we can write x squared plus y squared is equal to R squared. You guys know why that's true. If you have a circle of radius R, and then you create a little right triangle here with a base of x and a height of y. 
you could see that uh, x squared plus y squared is going to equal r squared. Uh, you can also verify this to yourself a different way. You could plug r cosine t in for x, r sine t in for y, and you're going to see that it satisfies that equation. Hence, it is true that x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. All right, next, we need to figure out our limits of integration if we want to do this, uh, this triple integral in cylindrical coordinates. So uh, here are the quantities we've got here. I have r going from 0 to 3, s going from 0 to 9 minus r squared, and t going from 0 to 2 pi. Um, I think the easiest one to wrap your mind around is the middle one here of s goes from 0 to 9 minus r squared. And the reason I think this one kind of makes sense, remember in the previous example, we had z top and z bottom. Well, now, I mean, we still have z top and z bottom, but uh, we have s top and s bottom. So um, this paraboloid in rectangular coordinates, it was z equals 9 minus x squared minus y squared. But now if we move over to cylindrical coordinates, we know that z gets replaced with s. I'm just a placeholder there, but it's representing the same, same thing. And then we have 9 minus now we have x squared uh, minus x squared minus y squared, but we know from here minus x squared minus y squared should be minus r squared. So our s top now is 9 minus r squared, and our s bottom, well, that's the same as our z bottom here. Um, that's just the xy plane, which is just z equals 0, or in this case, s is equal to 0. Okay, so that gets me my s top and my s bottom. And then, I mean, you can kind of see the rest of it here. We have a full rotation around the unit circle here with our polar coordinates. So t goes from 0 to 2 pi, hence 0 to 2 pi here. And then our um, circular cross sections, if you think about the radii on these circular cross sections, the biggest one on the bottom here has a radius of 3. And then we have smaller and smaller radii on our circular cross sections till we're at the top of the surface and we have a radius of zero. So hence, r goes from zero to three. So those will be our limits of integration when we wanna actually compute our triple integral. So you can see it animated here. Here's s bottom equals zero, s top is equal to nine minus r squared. We see that the largest radius that we get is that bottom cross section that has a maximum radius of three. And then we have every radius in between for all of our cross sections. So from zero to three. And then you could see that uh, we have a full rotation around that circle. So T max is two pi. So T ranges from zero to two pi. And finally, let's put it all together. So uh, we have all the information we need, right? We've got our Jacobian determinant. We've got our change of variables. We've got our limits of integration. Um, let's just all plug it all in. So you could see that I've got my bounds for my ds dr dt integral. You can kind of match those up um, with the previous slide if you'd like. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna use my Jacobian determinant of r. And then the only other thing I need to do is uh, my y squared here needs to become y of r s t squared. And we know that y of r s t is r sine t. So this entire integral starts to squish together pretty nicely. We have r sine squared t times r. That's going to be, um, so this is r sine squared t quantity squared. So that's going to become r squared times r, which is r to the cube, or r cubed, sorry, r to the third. And then um, sine squared is just sine squared there. All right, and so from here on out, I think this is uh, a triple integral that you guys can uh, can crunch the numbers on. And when you do so, you're going to get an answer of 243 pi over four. And just remember that this is not a volume calculation. So this is not the volume of that paraboloid trapped between the paraboloid and the xy plane. Um, and the reason it's not volume is because we have this x squared here, uh, or sorry, this y squared in our integrand. Um, you could certainly think of this as a mass calculation. If you imagine that y squared is the density 
of our region at uh, the density of our of our 3D region at each point, and we're accumulating that density across the 3D region, we're going to get its mass. So in a sense, I'm going to put it in quotes here, but it's almost like computing mass, but not literally because nowhere in the problem did they tell us that it's actually a mass calculation, but that's that's how you should frame it in your own mind. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed uh, this series of four videos and good luck on the homework for this chapter.